This is Roberto Jimenez. We last minute instructions from our referee Gabriel Martins. Shirtless is Jimenez with the black rash guard on is Dante Leon, a 15 minute submission only match. And interesting to note, Shanji, that Dante actually has a little bit of a weight advantage in this one. This was meant to be a 185 pound match. Dante came in at 183. Roberto is 10 pounds under, 174.8 pounds. Oh, wow. So Dante is at number two, 170, but he's heavier than 185. That's interesting. Yeah, he decided to uh, to go up in uh, in wait for this match because uh, look at this in on a leg lock attempt early. You know, we do know that Jimenez, if he does have one weakness, it is definitely the leg attacks, susceptible oh, to the heel hocks. It's, but it's pretty interesting what's happening. Like we can see Jimenez looking for the back. Whoa, Dante right on the top. Dante looks solid. Man, Dante, in on those legs, but. Jimenez, he has almost near magical back taking abilities and it did look for a second like he was going to flip that position and come out on the back but now it's Leon on top an opportunity for the Canadian to get his game going well and, and Roberto has no coach yeah Roberto Jimenez here by himself well, really just to compete and <laughs> yeah our, our Good. flow cameraman sat in the coach's chair but obviously not not getting in on the action of this one but Dante on top in this match do you do you feel that this is the right uh, that this is the right game plan for somebody like Roberto going on top and trying to pass well I think I think Roberto is good everywhere and I think he's doing his game look he's already have a little trap on the leg uh, he was able to get his game going. Yeah, look at that. Baron Bolo uh, twist, too. Twist looking position. Oh, the that's back. the danger of the fight. Beautiful transitions it. here from Roberto Jimenez. Uh, no he hooks. Has it. He, he has good control. Very tight seatbelt. And now Ooh. look at that. Going for the body triangle, those long legs. Even though he does have the, uh, uh, he is the slightly lighter of the two, definitely a lot taller. And those long legs are going to make it difficult to get out from this body triangle. Yeah, but he's been fighting all the way, so I don't think weight's a problem for Jimenez at all. That's correct. I mean, earlier this year, we have seen Roberto Jimenez go up against big names such as Nicky Rodriguez, such as Cyborg. Vi Victor Hugo. <laughs> such as Victor Hugo. So huge, huge competitors. But that's definitely not something he's ever shied away from right here. Now, look at this. Dante Leon have to be very careful from this position because Roberto, I mean... I'd have to check the stats, but I would imagine the majority of his submissions come from the back. Yeah, he can take the back from everywhere. It's really interesting how he did the De La Riva when inverted, controlled uh, one Dante's leg, and it ended up in the back. Oh, we can see a little head and arm choke there, being on the works. It's an interesting combination of the uh, the body triangle with that head and arm on the other side. It pretty much gives Dante nowhere to go, right? How would you get out of this position? Well, like when someone has a body triangle, you almost have to put yourself back with the hooks. You know, body triangles are definitely something that you have to protect your neck. Uh, definitely the first thing. But uh, I would say work yourself your, your way back into the hooks. That's usually one of my strategies. Um, you know, the lock is so strong, you know, people are so strong from there. So we're going to restart in the same position here. Same position. In the center oh, of the mat. Yeah. And, you know, it, it is still relatively earlier. We're not even five minutes into mm -hmm. this match so far. So they're, they're probably still pretty dry. And do you think that's also, uh, uh, you know, is, is better to kind of uh, get the back and hold it earlier in the match than later? Well, I think he's on the back. He should be attacking a little stronger. Maybe even suffocating Dante if, if for the for the sake of it. You know, since you can put the hand on on the on the face. But we can see even Roberto. He's shirtless and he's still pretty dry. You know, he took this control very early on the match. So I think he's just controlling, breathing. Um, you know, he's he's in a good spot. He has 11 minutes to work this position. Oh, a little back triangle, arm lock. Trying to get the arm there, oh. but wow. Just posturing up and then shaking off. Dante Leon manages to get out of trouble, but that was a deep, deep position to get stuck in there for a minute. And now on the attack, furiously trying to pass the guard. Jimenez is guard though, keeping him yeah, out of danger at that, this point. That took a lot out of, the, out of Dante, and you can see Roberto ah, is still ah. keeping the rhythm. 
Okay. He's not fading away at all. Very interesting to see. Uh, extremely focused and a very aggressive look in his eye. Jimenez, you know, he's a very emotional fighter, mm -hmm. right? We've mm -hmm. seen this in the past in, in many of his matches, you know, that, that, uh, that he really thrives in those kind of uh, those oh, exchanges. Oh, a little, little Rutola uh, foot stomp pass there. Now with Duncan. Oh, oh, in on the he leg now. He's on. Uh, he almost, oh, he's out. I think that Leon's strategy here now is clear that from bottom he knows that he's got a good chance of getting in on those legs. But Roberto, well, I mean, they say that, you know, lightning doesn't strike the same place twice, but he <laughs> has been caught with those leg locks more than once. But his early awareness for those positions. Mm -hmm. Getting him out of trouble. You have to see he's looking, he's pushing Dante out so he can get into his left side like he did earlier. See, he wants to go into it. Nah, but looking Dante, for that bolo. Dante, yeah. So he goes under, trap that leg to work the back. You know, like the, uh, almost like a, a, a twister what? out of the back, the same way he did earlier. In all of our interviews with Roberto prior to this event the one thing that he's talked about again and again is about his just letting his jiu-jitsu flow about just letting it just mm -hmm. letting it free and uh, just by letting his techniques do the work for him and uh so far i mean that seems to be working right yeah you know he's pretty confident he his mouth is still shut he's still doing just like breathing through his nose um dante's trying to do a good job putting pressure but uh see he's going to the bull again Jermaine is doing a really good job anticipating. Let me see if he can get ahead underneath. No, he changed it to a collar tie. And we've talked a lot about Dante Leon and his physicality. What? But let's not forget this guy has got great technique in, in all areas. If you had to categorize him technically, though, Shanji, what would, how, could you, how would you describe Dante? Would you call him a top player, a bottom player? Does he fall into um, one of those boxes? I don't think. I think he, he plays well everywhere. You know, he can bolo, he can pass, he can take down, uh, which, which is really good because, you know, a lot of times you see fighters, they're just very un, un, one-dimensional, you know, and, and Dante, he, he's very good everywhere. You know, I would say... Um, in, by watching him, I would say he's more of a top guy lately. But uh, don't take his guard for granted. We'll see a little side smash action. From bottom, we saw that the Dante's only real uh, attacks from bottom so far hasn't gone for any sweeps. Was going mm -hmm. straight after mm -hmm. those legs. But Roberto, uh, this close guard position is something that he's used so well all of 2020. We've seen him take the back from here a number of mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. His ability to get to the back really is stunning. He can get there from so many different positions, whether it's from, you know, the sort of the Bar Baron Bolo style entries and, and the winning the battle that way, or even just straight up old school, good old fashioned fundamental jujitsu from the close guard. Mm -hmm. And we don't see too much of that anymore, right, Shanji? No, like the thing about uh, the close guard that people need to know that you need to work from it. You know, um, I think the modern idea of jujitsu is like give me that technique that works right away. You know, and I think close guard you have to like mature the position and take your your ability to to you know play with the balance play with the posture and then get your attacks and i think people just like techniques that may may seem like the ones that work right away and also i can see dante kind of like having a hard time figuring out how to fight through Jimenez. you know i think dante have not found his his rhythm I think Jimenez is being a very, um, very unconventional puzzle for, for, for Dante right now. You can see he's very concerned. He doesn't want to stand up as it is. That is one uh, thing that Dante did say again and again before this as well, is that, is that Roberto is very unpredictable. And, you know, he can do a little bit of everything, but it's very, it's very difficult to know what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. he, Look at that back take that you're talking about. He improvises a lot in the middle of the match and it mm -hmm. doesn't really have clear strategies. He just really goes with the flow. And, and for Dante, that does seem to be a frustrating puzzle at this moment on top inside the closed guard and having trouble posturing out of it. Yeah, because if you posture out, that's what Roberto wants. You know, he's been do doing a really good job, again, breaking Dante's posture, but right now Dante is just on the bottom. I'd like to see maybe Roberto stay a little more sideways, even maybe playing a little rubber guard there. 
Uh, could be a strategy, but we don't know. He's deciding to, to lock the triangle. 76% oh. of Roberto Jimenez's mm. wins this year have come by submission. That is a phenomenal statistic, very mm -hmm. high percentage. And of course, that is against some of the best black belts in yeah. the world. Yeah, so pretty much what he's, Roberto is doing now, he locks the finger forward to try to get the underhooks. He has done that like three times already. Roberto Jimenez was actually in the co-main of event of our very first ever Who's Number One event at the very beginning of this year, going up against Keenan Cornelius in a gi match, and that was Roberto's black belt black debut, belt yeah, and he beautiful. came out and he beat Keenan Cornelius mm -hmm. in his first ever black belt match. Definitely set the, uh, set the scene for 2020. He's competed so much this year. He's had 29 matches since <laughs> the beginning of this year, and like we said, made his black belt debut pretty much right at the beginning of this year. Mm. And 30 fights in with this one. Twenty years of age is Jimenez. And he's already gone up wow. against some of the very best in the world. We talked about it earlier. Victor Hugo, Roberto Cyborg, Roberto Cyborg Nick Rodriguez. And they're shooting up that triangle from the guard. Wow. Nice single leg there, gets Dante down onto the mat. And I gotta say, so far, apart from those leg lock attacks, Dante is, uh, he's struggling to get off. He's struggling yeah. to, to, to find his attacks, to find those openings. Going in for another leg entry here, but Jimenez has been the one. He's scoring the takedowns. He's scoring the uh, the back attacks. Again, the back. And boom. He's going to insist on that. No. Bail. Leon comes up in the transition. We've got just less than four minutes remaining in this match so far. And i got to say that Roberto Jimenez, his jiu-jitsu, an enigma so far. A very difficult puzzle to solve. Whatever game plan it was that Dante Leon had, and have to feel that it was going in for those legs. So far, hasn't been uh, hasn't been able to get quite where he's looking. It hasn't stopped him trying though. Look at this. Oh, now is Dante dangerous. trying to come out on the back? Take the back on his own, but Roberto knows how to do there. Now the slipperiness working his favor. Yeah, now that is definitely a factor. We're around about 12 minutes into this match, and it looked like Leon was going to get the back, but Roberto Jimenez was able to flip that position now here on top and back into passing the guard. And, and also, Roberto, he's not afraid to put, put weight, you know, commit from the top. You know, he's varying, he's doing a little stomp leg game, he's changing to underhooks. You know, it's a good point, Shanji, because actually, uh, after a couple of leg lock entries, people, they tend to get a little bit shy, mm -hmm. don't they? And they don't mm -hmm. try to walk into the guard. It's not stopping Roberto. Yeah, but also, like, Dante, you know, he's not much of a heel hooker or anything, you know, for that sense. But uh, you can see that Roberto is still right in his face, and, and, and Dante, just, just his posture, his, his hands are like, you know, he doesn't know where to go. It seems like the puzzle, it's, it's being tricky. See his back is on the floor. Usually Dante is more aggressive. You know, usually he's he should be, he usually he would be being bowling, maybe kiss of the dragon from there, and you can see he's he's doubtful. And I think that's what's uh, making Roberto, you know, getting an edge in this fight because he knows like what he wants. About two minutes remaining now in this middleweight match. This side to side movement from Roberto Jimenez there. Trying to fight his way up to his feet is Dante Leon. Shoots in Leon, but runs into a brick wall there. It's interesting, isn't it, uh, Shanji, that, that Roberto, you wouldn't class him as a wrestler by any means, and yet we've seen him go head to head, mm -hmm. you know, and, and wrestle with guys who often outweigh him. He never seems uncomfortable with that. No, you know, he, he's betrayed by his father. His father is known for being like a beast, super strong. And, uh, 
and like I said, if, if, if a guy like Roberto, like his first two years at Black Bell, he has fought the who's who of Jiu Jitsu. Good guillotine attempt Gui. there from Leon, but Roberto manages to get his head out and Gui and no Gui. And I think when you, when, you, when, you say, when he says, I let my Jiu Jitsu flow, it means I'll wrestle, I'll do guard, I'll pass. And he's doing a good job, and the experience uh, speaks for itself. He fought wrestlers, he fought huge guys, he fought guard guys. So I don't think, at this point, I would say that that hasn't. I don't think Roberto hasn't faced, uh, like he has faced everything this year. So I don't think Dante or anybody can can really surprise him. Oh, oh my! Look nice at that transition there, pass. right on the edge of the mat. And he's going for the mount. I like that aggressiveness. You can see Dante didn't even phase the, the, the defense. Yeah, that body lock, Roberto riding the moment, uh, the movement all the way through the standing phase down into the side control and into the mount. But look at this, mm. out the back door is Dante Leon. Stop. You know, that sweat and the slipperiness. With 18 seconds left on the clock, it's gonna be pretty much impossible to get hold of a limb to be able to finish this. And we'll see them fight down to the last second here at who's number one. One last guard pass attempt, but I gotta oh, say, triangle. triangle attempt here Ooh. from Jimenez. Oh, he has time, five seconds. Five seconds left. Four, three, two. One. There is the end of the match. Time is over. And I gotta say, if there was ever any doubt, that last second submission attack from Jimenez. Well, that may just seal it with the judges, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to go to a judge's decision here, unanimous for Roberto Jimenez, the winner. Ladies and gentlemen.